see on the punt that got blocked uh, as far as what could have been done differently. And one of the things that people have said about Ryan maybe in the past is that he's a little too deliberate to get wind up. Some other punters are quicker to get the ball off. Uh, did, you, did you see any concern there? Yeah, when something like that happens, obviously it's, obviously it's not just one guy. So that's a unit. Um, starts and ends with me. Uh, we got to play with more urgency, more violence, more strike. Um, and we'll, we'll get better. We'll, we'll fix that. But, uh, you know, it's not one guy's fault. It starts and ends with me. That wind-up that he alluded to, is that something that, that you've noticed? Are you guys working on that? Of yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've been working on it since day one. Um, you know, Ryan's done a great job for us, and he'll, he'll continue to do that, and we have the utmost confidence in him. All, all the units have gone out and, and fared so poorly after after training camp and an off season of preparation. Will you repeat that question? How collectively could your units have gone out and, and performed so poorly after su such long build up and preparation? How how could we have been so poor? Yeah, I, I mean it's unacceptable. Starts and ends with me. We uh, you know we did some we did some good things, but not good enough. Um, we left some meat on the bone, but uh, you know giving up that block punt, that long that long kickoff return was unacceptable. Um, we got to get better, and we'll, we'll do that. So what do you need to do different if it starts and ends with you? I got to get these guys ready. Um, you know, we got to play with more violence, more strike, uh, more urgency. What kind of things did you learn about the uh, new kickoff rules, seeing it in a regular season game versus kind of what you guys have been dealt in the preseason so far? Um, I think it's just going to hit a little faster than, than you think. Um, you know, preseason, I, I don't know if those the starting recur returners were out there per se for every team. Uh, this return, that returner for Chicago did a really good job. That return got on us fast. Uh, I think our guys felt that. Uh, so we just got to do, do a better job just – playing with more speed and, and getting ready to redirect and, and get off blocks. On the punt team, it, it felt like the gunners were, at least to begin the game, consistently getting past the the returner. What's the coaching point there to keep a guy in front of you? Yeah, I mean, when, when it comes to, you know, a play like that, it's it's not just, you know, one guy that's, you know, it, it's hang time, it's it's operation, uh, how fast are they getting down there. So those are tough plays for gunners to make, but we, we want our gunners to make those plays, and, and you know, we're counting on them to, to finish at the point of attack. and. Um, you know, make those tackles, and uh, we got to do a better job there. Jaquan did as far as decision making and maybe hitting the holes uh, on Sunday. I thought he did a good job. You know, being being his first regular season game, I thought he did a good job. Now, um, you know, like I said, there we, we left a lot of skin, uh, a lot of meat on the bone. Um, you know, there's a couple of kickoff returns that, that could be out the gate. Um, he tripped one time. Um, there was a punt return that we had an opportunity to to be longer than it was, and. I, I think he's going to continue to grow, and he's going to be a, a weapon for us. As far as the uh, the kickoff returns and the new rule, what is your kind of philosophy on how far deep in the end zone before you don't bring it out and just take the touchback? Um, you know, with without giving everything away, there, it's it's a couple of yards. Um, you know, it's a couple of yards. Uh, and then, you know, who, who are you playing? What what uh, what opponent are you playing? Who, who's their cover guys? Can you attack them? How's our matchups inside? Um, can we hold these guys up? So um, there's a lot of variables that go into it, but probably I'd just say a couple of yards. What goes into practice or what could end up being a wet ball game this weekend in your phases? Yeah, I mean, that's something we work with. We, we, we douse the balls with, with, with water and um, long snappers, holders, um, even returners, you know, just letting them feel that. But definitely just getting the balls away. <laughs> Why should I say that? But, you know, just making sure they're, they're handling um, those footballs that are wet. Turf effect at all, or is, is it kind of the same turf for grass? Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, a wet football is a wet football. So. You said it's not just on one guy. Gibbons, you talking about his miss of the block, pretty much said, if I block my guy, the punt's not blocked. So, how how do we jive? It's not just one guy versus the one guy saying it was on him. Yeah, it's it's football. Um, you know, it's, it's at the end of the day. I mean, I, I'm a competitor. I know. I know Gibby's a competitor. Um, everybody on that punt team's a competitor, and we got it. We all got to get better, and we will. What's your week been like? I guess with Will, just trying to build him up, learn from Sunday, and, and getting him ready for another one. You know, I don't think he needs this build up. You know what I mean? He's a confident guy. I think he played well at times in the game, and you know, he had some big mistakes that really cost us. And that it's a little bit of a learning experience in this league. You know, there's. The margins of winning and losing are very small. And so for him to make a couple of those plays that he wish he had back, but he's not 
you know, I don't feel his confidence is shaken at all. So it's not kind of a build-up thing. It's just kind of stick to the preparation and go through situations and keep talking to him through all these things that come up. And, you know, he hasn't even, you know, oh, what does he started 10, 11 games now or something like that. So all these things are going to keep, keep coming or things are going to keep coming up, but we just hope they aren't as, you know, bad as they went on Sunday at the end. Hopkins had seven, sorry, 17 snaps, nine routes run, I yep. think. What, was it worth it? Did he seem effective to you? He did. He did. You know, I think there was a, you know, we went into him as the week went on, as he started getting himself played, because, you know, he missed pretty much all of training camp. So we didn't want to just throw him out there and let him go, you know. And so we talked to him kind of on Friday and on Saturday about, hey, we're going to get you between right around 15 snaps, which is what it ended up being. And I think there were some things where you could really see he, he looked just fine and those kind of things. And I also think he's got a little bit of gravity to him. You see him out there and you know that that's DeAndre Hopkins out there and he can, you know, make some plays. So he does garner attention still. And we're, uh, you know, he's been practicing more this week and we're going to keep ramping him up as we go. One of the Jets defenders apparently said that Will looked like he was panicky when things didn't go right on tape. What's your assessment of how he held up in the pocket uh, against pressure? I think there were times that he was really good against pressure, especially early in the game. I think they're, you know, kind of the ball came out. Uh, he really, and I thought he saw it well. Like on the last play, he knew he was hot. You know what I mean? He knew he was hot. They brought a great blitz from the field. He knew all those things. So he saw it well. So I didn't see panicky. And, you know, it's just a physical error compounded by a little bit of a me or mental error of not throwing it away. So I do think that that was part of it. And then, I think you go back to watching some of the game as the game went on in times of stress, all positions on our team went back to a little bit of some old habits. You know what I mean? You kind of saw, and that's across the board, whether it was some of the receivers in their routes, some of the linemen in their pass sets, the quarterback drifting into pressure a little bit, kind of, you know, getting his feet off kilter. So I thought it was kind of group wide a little bit at the end. A lot of problems compounded each other, not just Will. What do you feel like, what do you feel like uh, caused them to kind of relapse into old habits? I think there's a part of, you know, these – got it. There, that's a good question. I would say, you know, the length of the game, right? Those guys, that's the longest they'd played, right? So I think is the, the stress. And that's a really good defense, right? I, I don't kind of want to take anything away from the Bears either. You know, they were one of the top defenses in the league last year, and eventually they kind of got theirs too, you know, and – so I think they started playing – I think the Bears started playing better, which probably also hurt us a little bit. But, you know, it's kind of how it goes in this league. It's a kind of a – sometimes the games are up and down and you got to manage the downs. And they they get good players too. So When you're getting beat a lot on, or losing on first down, second down, or even penalties, like how much more stress does that put on you as a play caller? Layering plays, being able to put together drives and things like that. You know, the number one thing we talked about going into the week was being efficient on first and second down. So first and second down, if you looked at the Bears stats last year, if you were third and eight plus, they were awesome. And then we started out, we had seven, third and nine or longers. So all of a sudden it becomes harder and harder. We had the false starts at the beginning of the game. Then we got some penalties. We kept getting behind the chains. And it's hard to call a game like it. And that's a defense that when they're not on their heels, they play downhill. So I think for us, that kind of our inefficiency on first down, whether it's penalties, whether it was inefficient plays, all those things, those compounded to the second half problems. Now prepping for the Jets defense, what do you see in them that's made them so formidable over the last few years? You know, they are a – they are going to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups, right? So on third down, they're going to get five guys. They're going to get five one-on-one -on -one blocks. They're going to – their DBs are going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And so you got to beat your one-on-one. -on -one. And they got really good players. So I think that's part of the deal. They they bet that they're one, they're going to win more one-on-one -on -one matchups than you do. So you know that's kind of the challenge for each guy. You know, football. You know, we got to win 11 one-on-one -on -one matchups each play to have success. So they really put stress on you from that regard. You mentioned one-on-ones. What do you see out of Sauce Gardner? Everyone kind of considers him as maybe the best cornerback in the league. Oh, I think he's got. I think he's got a great feel. You know, he's him and. You know, going up against Jalen last week and Sauce this week, and every team's got a great corner. So it's kind of that kind of preparation from last week kind of continues over of really, you know, having awareness for a great corner. You know, I think uh, number four, Reed, I think he's a really, really good corner. You know, so they've got two guys that they can play on the outside. The nickel's super active and they can run. So um, I don't know if I totally answer your question. I think I started talking about them uh, as a whole, but – 
that preparation of trying to attack those guys is they've got great awareness of how they've been attacked. You know, they got experience in the system. That late game stress you're talking about, how do you go about armoring players for that? Is that something that has to develop within, or is there something you can do off the field that kind of prevents that from building up? I think we try to put those guys in as many situations as practice as we can, right? But the one thing about game speed is game speed, right? And so I think you watch those guys and how fast it was, and you know those guys really kind of came downhill. But the more reps, the more times we're in the situation, we feel better about it. So I think it's just kind of as time grows, we're going to get better in those. Uh, of what he learned in Cincinnati, of understanding what you do well, and sometimes what you do well is not what you thought you would do well. You have to redefine your identity of sorts. Absolutely. Where do you guys draw the line in that of like, we need to stick to our preparation and what our idea is versus understanding it's gone too far, it's not working, now we can try something different. I think we're always gonna evaluate what is the best matchups for our guys, whether it's in the run game, in the pass game, who do we need to help? Pass protection wise, how can we isolate a DB? So that's really where that kind of comes from in the game planning process is we're just gonna kind of keep trying to pick and turn. And then what are our guys get better at, right? So I can wanna throw a slant route all we want, right? But if we don't throw it, we don't catch it well, we can't whatever, we can't block this protection, we really can't run it. So I think you go keep evaluating constantly and we don't ever want to be kind of stuck in a box of this is just what we do. And I don't, I don't think that's kind of like archaic coaching, you know. I know a lot of fans struggle with just offensive line evaluation in general because mm -hmm. it's a harder thing to understand. And, you know, they see in this offseason you bring in Bill Callahan, who's got this history as a great coach. You bring in a lot of young talent. And then in week one, you know, a little bit left to be desired. Uh, just the nature of how it takes time for offensive lines, history tells us to, to figure it out. What are your thoughts on um, the, you know, the slow nature of offensive lines starting to gel and what are your expectations for a young group like that as you go through a season? You watch offensive line, but you know, there are no subs, right? So those guys get 75, 70, 75 game reps. You know what I mean? A receiver may get 50, a running back may get 40. So those guys get, you know, it is a trial by fire and those guys keep getting thrown in there. I also think you go back to young linemen, you know, the college football is played very differently than the NFL for that part, you know? And so the physicality and the speed of these grown men, it, it, it's, a lot, it's a lot different. So it does take time. Uh, I think, you know, in the first half, you would have said, well, this line's playing pretty good. You know what I mean? And then they get behind, we get the sack fumble, we get a couple of pressures at the end, and now it's kind of feels like it snowballs on you. But I think if you look at the performance as a whole, you would say there were a lot of positives too. So you kind of keep building on the positives and then working through the negatives and try to eliminate those mistakes. In your experience in, in games when things are going well for the offensive line and then you hit some kind of a roadblock like that, what's usually the, the thing to blame? Is it a specific guy not doing his job? Is it a communication issue? Is it that fatigue from playing so often? No, I don't think it's anything like that. I think there's always, I think each one's kind of individual based of what it happens. Sometimes the guy, you know, just has a bad pass set or sometimes they blitz a different look that we didn't practice. So I think there's always variation in that. What is it? I thought those guys played really well at the end. I thought they kind of got on some of our edges. So I think we had some set issues. I think there was one pass. Trip. So again, I thought there was a little bit of everything and they kind of hit some things right. And there's some things that we missed that we thought we would, you know, hit in the head and we just didn't. So how, that, how much of that would you feel? Cause I know Brian Callahan talked about adjustments from series to series, not mm -hmm. just first half, second half. How much of those struggles would you feel are from not adjusting correctly from series to series? Uh, I don't think that. I, I don't think we felt like there was a lot of play calls we wanted back. You know, there were some we did. You know, there were some we liked, and you come back, and there's some ones we, oh, hey, maybe we could have done this, we could have done that. But there were no play calls or adjustments that we were like, oh, that was just a, that was just a dumb play. You know what I mean? So we felt like we saw what they were going to do. We had a plan for what they were going to do. We just kind of didn't execute the plan from that regard. In terms of Calvin, and Will trying to get on the same page. You were with Calvin last year in mm -hmm. Jacksonville. How long did it take those two to get on the same page and kind of <laughs> where is he with Will in relation to that at this early juncture of the season? I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to compare, I would say, because Calvin was coming into an offense that kind of 
you know, Trevor had been through before and things like that. I think here it's a little bit more, we're all starting this thing together. So I wouldn't say it's totally comparable. And, you know, if Calvin, if we hit him on the go ball down the left side line and we hit him on the big post and the touchdown, we're talking about how in sync they are. You know what I mean? So I, we don't we don't feel as a staff that they're out of sync. We think we missed those two plays, but those two big plays down the field, and I think when we hit those, we're going to feel really good about it. But Compelled to yell at a guy at the part of your trying to get a message through. To me, I'm not much of a yeller. You know, I don't think that's kind of my – deal it's come out every now and again and I think for me if I was going to fake it and kind of walk around here like I'm some tough guy you know I'm not sure that's my uh that's my persona you know you got to be genuine to who you are but you know there's a couple times in training camp where we're out there just kind of playing like a bunch of idiots and they, they saw a version of it come out and I know you know Brian's Brian's got a kind of a short fuse that these guys have seen every now and again and you know Bill and everybody you know Jay I, I think offensively I can speak that kind of everybody's still got a little bit of that somewhere in them so it comes out every now and again but you also want to be true to yourself and I'm not kind of a freak out guy that that's kind of would be disingenuous to me With the on Sunday we saw Chickaconquo almost double the snap count of both Josh Wiley and Nick Vanette in that game mm -hmm. and all uh, off season we heard about how those guys are playing kind of two different positions Chig more of that F and Wiley more of that Y was that more part of the game plan and the looks you saw against Chicago utilizing Chig more in that role versus Josh Wiley? Or is that something that may change from game to game? It'll change from game to game. You know, each week there's kind of, they kind of have a special skill set, things like that. And then Josh is kind of coming off injury. So, you know, he's, Chig had a handful of more reps on some of the stuff we'd practiced in the weeks leading up to Chicago. So we felt comfortable with Chig and those. And sometimes it's just kind of how the calls come off the sheet. But they're both kind of listed on there a bunch. We've got them, you know, tight ends tagged for certain things. And sometimes guys are just out there. We let them go a little bit. And Chig was playing pretty well. So he ended up uh, getting kind of a little bit more. But I would see it being kind of spread out as the season goes. Yeah, maybe what are some areas that you feel like can take it another level? Well, I think, you know, when it came out, they played tough. They played intelligent. They played together. It was an aggressive group, and they were nasty on contact. Early in the game, some things we need to get better with some early communication, especially in the back end, which was kind of expected. Guys didn't play a lot uh, throughout the course of training camp, and we had a couple miscues that didn't hurt us. Um, but we, we need to get that cleaned up. And we did this week, and it was addressed, and uh, there will be better from it. I know coming in, generating turnovers was something you really wanted to do. This defense last year, they were second to last. Right. One turnover in this game, what what could you guys have done to? Well, that's to that's the thing we harped on. Like, in terms of keeping the ball in front, tackling, you know, building the wall in the run game, the one thing that you come out of the game and say, we didn't take the ball away. And um, that's a huge emphasis for us. It's a huge emphasis going into this game. And the thing that, you know, with takeaways, it's about your technique. It's about population to the ball and being violent at the point of a contact. And we need to do that. We need to make uh, effort to knock the ball out, get it off of the team, to create short fields or scoring defense. And if you want to be a good defense in the league, you got to take the ball away. Jeff said there were some things that were maybe apparent that against a more experienced, more savvy quarterback mm -hmm. might have been a problem. What were some of you agree with that? And what were some of well, the that, things that, that maybe was, could hurt you? Some of the things are just communication, just tighten up the detail of what we're doing in terms of um, up front and the back end, just all everybody being on the same page. And, and the good thing, you know, we got through that game, guys played well, it didn't hurt us, it didn't expose us, but those things that that hurt us or expo that, that showed up, it's going to show up again until teams make sure we got it corrected. So we focus, focus on that, get all those things fixed, and then we move on. Sweat was pretty disruptive on Sunday, it seemed like. But uh, he said that there's still a lot of room for improvement in his game. Where do you see him needing to take his game now? Well, he's, he's on the right trajectory. You know, he's the player we envisioned when we drafted him. He keeps getting better and better. And, you know, that was his first live game. And you know how it is. You go out there the first time, um, you know, and you have some success. It gives you success or confidence in your mind to, to, go, to go out and play even better. In his mind, he wants to be one of the best defensive tackles in the National Football League. I think he told you guys that when we drafted him. And that's what we want him to be. And the more he goes out there and play, um, he's getting in better and better shape. You know, he's he's happy about some of the the uh, losing weight and everything else. And, 
you know, as the season go on, I just see the guy, you know, everything's going to come to fruition on what he is and what we expect him to be. How happy are you that he was able to give you, I think it was 38 snaps on Sunday? Oh, I was great. It was great. I, man, honestly, he can play more snaps. You know, um, the game, the way the game played out, you know, we wanted to keep guys fresh for the end, the, you know, so if, as it came down to crunch time, they were ready to go. Um, but he could he could play more snaps. But the good thing about our D-line, the rotation was extremely well. Um, Tracy Rocker, Ben Bloom did a great job of making sure guys were in and out, you know, keeping them fresh, keeping them in spots that we really needed them. And, um, you know, we expect to do that going forward. Kind of get himself ready to be ready when his body allowed it, and how how much could an extra piece like that help the defense? Yeah, he's done a great job of just you know getting back, you know, doing the extra stuff, um, you know, taking care of his body. But yeah, with a piece like Jamal out there, you already got a bunch of guys that's hungry, that's aggressive, that's running to the ball. You know, he adds he he fits in, and then he adds more to it. Um, so having him out there playing the style of ball that we want to play around here. Uh, he'll be a great addition, you know, with the snaps that he plays. Do you expect the rotation with Jack and Ernest to stay about where it is right now, or as Ernest gets more involved, do you think he's going to play a little more? Ernest is going to play a little bit more, you know, but all three linebackers are going to play. Very happy with all three linebackers. Um, but, you know, it was first time Ernest out. You know, he, we got him a week before, the, you know, week before the first game, getting feel. You know, he's getting a feel for us, getting a feel for the defense. But one thing about Ernest is and, and when you saw him, he didn't miss a beat. And when Ernest comes downhill, he is heavy. And uh, he's very instinctual. Um, so we love where he's at, and he's getting more comfortable. And, you know, as he gets more comfortable, the more he'll play. It looks like you guys shadowed a little bit with your cornerbacks in Chicago. What's your philosophy on shadowing guys? And when you've got a guy like Snead who's done a lot of that in his career, right. does that kind of change the math for you? Uh, it depends on the game plan. You know, um, the first week we put um, – we put LJ into the boundary, you know, and the game plan was to roll to the field and let him win the one-on-ones. But that changes every week. It depends on who's the uh, receiver, what they're trying to do, their route concepts. Um, you know, Cheeto can play any receiver as well, but Cheeto was coming back from missing time. So it was another way to put Cheeto out to the field so he wasn't stressed as much into the boundary with one-on-one balls until he got his conditioning back and, and, and played longer, you know. And this week he's unlimited in practice. He feels good. And so we'll see how the game plan folds out against Green Bay. I imagine uh, batted balls an emphasis every week, I yeah. guess, it's especially a key this week with Rodgers getting the ball out quick and, and that where you could get some turnovers on plays like that. Yeah, you know, we teach this. If you're a pass rusher, but if you can't get there, you become a pass defender. So if you're not close enough to the quarterback to put him down or put your hands on him, get your hands up. And uh, we know this, you know, we talked about turnovers earlier. The greatest way to get takeaways is tips and overthrows. And just to go back to the game, there were opportunities for us to get picks. The ball was in the air. It was just unfortunate where the ball landed, you know. But we will, we will rush. We will rush and try to uh, be disruptive with our rush. But if he's getting the ball out, we got to match the hand. To what degree is yelling – part of your repertoire to get through the guys? Uh, it depends on when you talk about when I'm yelling. On the practice field, I yell a lot. And the reason I do it is to create stress. So they already stressed by the practice, what's going on. So I try to stress them even more by me yelling. Um, during the game situations, I'm very quiet. Um, I let the game, I let them play the game. The game is already too much. Um, look, my philosophy is this, and our philosophy on defense, you coach the players hard, and you love them even harder. So if they know you care and they know you're trying to get the best out of them, you can push them to the edge, and they won't break, all right, because they know at the end of the day it's never personal. And when they come off the field, you teach them why it happened, how to correct it. So you coach them hard and you love them harder. How about in film review when you're looking at a mistake? Oh, I coach everything hard. There's nobody in the meeting room – um, that won't get pointed out. Because if I don't point out the best players, the young guys won't get better. Sometimes that comes with volume? It comes with volume. Everything comes with volume. Voice inflection, when you speak in public, voice inflection, voice tone, the way you speak grabs the attention of the, opponent, of, of, of the people in the room. 
So you can get loud and be talking about something that's really exciting. It doesn't always have to be a negative thing because if you stay the same the whole time, are they really listening? Right. And it's about them listening and grabbing their attention and them being on the, the edge of the seat. So they understand and thoroughly understand what you're talking about, what you want done and where you want to go in terms of the team. Denard, how much does it help Tracy's experience uh, as a coach in this league? That, and how cool is it that he gets to, after practice, go to Seattle, watch Kumar do something that, uh, you know, kind of every parent's dream to watch their kid, you know, debut <coughs> like that? Look, I'm so happy for the Rocker family. You know, I've been around Tracy for many years. I know his son very well, and I understand the relationship that he has with his son. So for him as a coach, he's going to do his, his, his work, his due diligence. The players understand he's going to get on that plane and he's going to be the – forget being the coach. Now he's the happiest parent, you know, one of the happiest parents in the world. And to be able to, to go to see your son throw out a first pitch in a major league baseball game and your son has gone through the adversity he has and went through the minors to get to this point, man, it's a hell of a feeling. And it's not just about the Rockers. It's about everybody that the Rockers touch because that family is a great family. Uh, they're good people. They care about people. And from our perspective, we care about them. And I'm so happy that he's going to see his son play. It's a wonderful thing. You can stay up late watch, uh, watch the game? I'm going to watch the game. Yeah. I'll have it on in the background as I continue to do some work. Mobility is obviously a big on. thing to scout when you're looking ahead at a quarterback. Caleb Williams had the ability to move. Aaron Rodgers, different considering mm -hmm. his injury. How much does that play a factor in your conversation with your guys? It all plays a factor, you know, on, on the rush plan and how you do it. You know, Aaron didn't move a lot in the first game, but, uh, you know, from history, he still he still moved. And I didn't see anything from an injury standpoint uh, to say that he can't move. So we're going to prepare as, you know, if it's, if it's clean for him to go, he's going to go. Uh, I'm treating Aaron Rodgers as the Aaron Rodgers of old as of right now until I see otherwise. So you've made your standards clear for this defense. How has their response to this first loss aligned with your expectations? Well, look, you know, you play this game and you do anything to win, right? There's no moral victories in the way you played or how you played on defense. The number one objective is to win, and we didn't win. So we all hurt. But they understand that the way we played and the style that we play, it works in this league. Now it's about cleaning up the small details and going against a Hall of Fame quarterback and a great team in the New York Jets. Um, going against them is, can you play the same way and can you play with more discipline? And if you do that and, and, and you come out there and you, you have some success, it, the, the confidence just keeps growing. And that's, that's where we're at right now. You know, it's guys believing in what we're saying as a unit, as a, as a team, as a whole, from the GM down. And our philosophy has stayed consistent. So now it's about having our philosophy and just keep going and building off of it. You got to realize we're a young team together, offense and defense. There's going to be mistakes made. But as I say in the, in the room with the guys, if you make a mistake, you got to make it right. So the mistakes that we made, we got to make right. We got to fix them and we move on.